Business analysts spend a lot of time dealing with data. Let's face it, whether you're a business process engineer, whether you're a cybersecurity expert, or you happen to be defining a new web application, you're always dealing with data. And thus, I'm really surprised when I meet business analysts that don't understand that data has a life cycle. It's not only important to understand how you use the data, but you need to understand how it's created. And then you have to understand how it's going to be deleted or destroyed. My name is Stephanie Lockman Doucette, and it is my pleasure to share with you a very simple three or four letter acronym that'll help you remember the key elements of the data life cycle. Over the past 15 years, I have helped thousands of technical and non-technical professionals launch their career in business analysis. And helping them understand the data life cycle is, is fundamental to ensuring their success. Now, I mentioned that I was going to share with you a very simple three-letter acronym. And that acronym is CUD, or CUD, for Create, Update, and Delete. Those are the three very fundamental elements of the data life cycle. But really, if you take a moment to look at, well, how do you use the data? There's a couple other elements we need to consider. Are you just reading the data? Are you editing the data? Are you sharing it? Are you transferring it? Are you reporting on it? And if you look at all the different things that you can do with data, it, there really is just two things. You're either reading it or you're updating it. So that simple three letter acronym actually becomes a four letter acronym, create, read, update, and delete. So let's think about it. When you're creating the data, you need to think about who, what, where, when, why, and how the data is created. Let's take a look at who. Well, is it created by people? Is it created by processes? Is it transferred from a third party? Is it created by systems that are generating data? You have to take a look at who's creating the data. Then you have to take a look at how are they creating it? Is it coming automatically? Is it entered manually? What data is being created? Is it tech information, video, sound? Particularly when you're dealing with data that is entered by humans, then you need to look at how is the data entered? Is it entered as free text fields, drop downs, check boxes, multi-select lists, those types of things? I do recommend that you try to avoid free text fields where possible because free text fields make it very difficult for reporting afterwards. Then you need to look at, well, where is the data coming from? Is it coming from inside the organization, outside the organization? Is it coming through a file? And then consider when is it coming? Is it coming at a certain time of day, at a certain time of the month? Is it coming on a transactional basis? Then you need to think about, well, why is it created? Why do we need this information after all? Some people like to create information just for creating information, but really it is important that you have a reason why you're doing that. Finally, when you're creating data, take a moment to think about data quality because that information that you're gathering now has to be used later. So you don't want to be creating a bunch of garbage reports or a garbage presentation. Make sure to collect data of high quality, high accuracy. Now, after you've spent time thinking about how the data is created, you need to spend some time thinking about how is it actually going to be read? How is it going to be used? You need to think about who's going to be accessing the data and when are they going to be accessing it and how? So is it going to be accessed by humans? Which humans? Um, the executives, the middle management, various departments, maybe it's for your external stakeholders. Depending upon who's reading the data, you need to understand what specific elements of the data they're going to see. Because not everybody gets to see all of the data. Due to certain security restrictions or privacy concerns, there's generally some data that is restricted to certain viewers. So it's important that you understand who gets to see what data. Then think about, well, how are they going to be accessing the data and where are they accessing the data? Are they looking at it on their smartphone? Are they looking at it on a computer screen? How about a poster, a report? Maybe they're looking at it a live monitor. So it's important to understand where the data is presented and how it's presented. Is it multilingual? Is it one language? Is it pictorial? Is it audio? All of these things need to be considered. Then you need to think about, well, when is the data being displayed and shown? Is it something that's going to be scheduled once a month? Is it scheduled once a day? Is the data only relevant at a certain time of day and then it's no longer appropriate? 
Um, is it something that's more ad hoc and self-service or is it something that's pushed to the particular client as opposed to pull? These are all things to consider about how the data is going to be used. Finally, ask the question why. As a business analyst, I'm always asking why. Because a lot of people think, well, it's just because, but actually there are certain justifications or reasons why data needs to be displayed or why data should not be displayed. It's important that you understand what those considerations are. So now that we've spent time talking about how data is created and well as how it's read, we need to talk about, well, how is it updated? How is it changed, edited, modified? Once again, you need to talk about who has the ability to edit the data and where do they edit the data? Is it only for the executives? Is it for the worker bees? Is it for middle management? Who can modify the data? And how do they modify the data? Is it going to be something that they do um, in a text editor? Is it something that's a process is updating the data? A lot of different things can update data. Where is the data updated? Is it updated on a screen? Is it updated programmatically by a process? Is it updated by file transfers that are merged into the data? Consider all the different ways of where the data is modified and how the data is modified. Then you need to think about when the data is modified. Once again, is it something that's modified maybe a monthly batch process or a weekly or daily batch process? Is it something that's modified on an ad hoc basis by a user? Is it something that is modified in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening? Understand when the data is modified. Then think about why the data is modified. What triggers the change? Is it just because there's been a transaction, there's been a change? Understand all the different reasons and causes of what could initiate that change in data. And after you've understood what changes the data, think about the repercussions that are caused by the data. A change in data may trigger some action or a change in a state. It's important to understand what's happening to the data, but also what's happening because of the data change. Now it's time to talk about deleting the data. And deleting is one of those special things because there's multiple ways it can be interpreted. Delete could be interpreted as to deactivate the data because you still need it for referential integrity within the database. It could mean to archive the data because, well, you don't need it in the current transaction system, but you do need it for historical reference, so you want to move it to another system. Or it really could mean to delete and destroy because you no longer need any reference to that information. So first of all, your consideration when you're talking about deleting the data is which one of those is relevant in your situation. And you might actually have all three because they are relevant at different time periods in the life of the data. First of all, as data is maybe medium age, you might move it to an archive. If uh, you're working with a user-based system and people want to delete their account, well, you need to maintain that account for its database integrity, so you're going to deactivate it. But eventually, it's no longer relevant, so you destroy the data. Now, once again, we need to look at the who, what, where, when, and why of deleting your data. So, who has the ability to delete data? And what is what are they deleting? When are they deleting it? Uh, users have the ability to delete their account, but they're not really destroying their account. They're just deactivating the account. Is there anybody in your system that does have the ability to actually destroy the account? Is it something that's done programmatically? Is it something that's done by a user with special privileges? How do they do the, the deleting or the archiving or destroying of the data? Is it triggered based upon time? Is it triggered based upon a particular change in events? Is it done weekly? Is it done by batch? Is it done as a one-off? All of these questions are things that you need to consider. Also take a moment to understand why the data is being moved or archived or destroyed. Is there a legal requirement? Is it just that you're running out of storage capacity in your organization? Is it that it's no longer relevant? Think about and ask the question, why are we doing this? Because it's important to understand. It's also important to understand what data stays and what data goes. Data retention rules are a fundamental element of managing the data life cycle. Some data is really transient. Some data is more transactional. Some data has to be retained for a certain legal period of time. Other data is just useful for background information and not key to the business processes. Understand what needs to be retained for what period and why. Now, at the beginning of this video, I also promised you two additional elements that support the data lifecycle. And those two elements are 
storage, and security. Because in addition to understanding the life cycle, you need to understand, well, how are we going to store all this information? I know a lot of technical people will think, well, that's an implementation consideration, but it actually is a business requirement. You need to understand where the data is stored because there sometimes are legal requirements about, well, the data needs to be retained in this country versus that country. These are business requirements and thus it's important for you as a business analyst to consider how the information will be stored, where the information is stored, as well as how secure is that information? Does it need to be encrypted when it's at rest? Does it need to be encrypted when it's in transit? Who actually has the ability to look at the data? And how are they going to be looking at the data? We talked a lot about accessing the data before, but it's think about it more from a security perspective and make sure that the data is safe and only visible to those people that really have a need to know. So there you have it. That's the three letter or four letter acronym related to data lifecycle. You can create data, you use data, and you delete data. Or you create data, you read it, you update it, and then you delete data. Whatever one makes sense for you. As well as those two additional elements about security and storing the data. That's what makes the data life cycle and makes it effective and useful for your particular organization. My name is Stephanie Lockman Doucette, and this is Progera practical perspectives in IT project management and business analysis. It's been my pleasure to speak with you today. And remember, if you like what you heard, please take a moment to click that thumbs up icon. If you'd like to hear more from Progera, click the subscribe button. And if you have friends or colleagues that could benefit from understanding what the data life cycle is, please share the video. It's been my pleasure to speak with you. Please take a moment to leave a comment in the section below so that I can understand what questions are you curious about? How can I help you with your career? Until we talk next time, take care.